hello? Hello? Hello. Um, you uh, sent a message regarding a book that you received off, off the cards. Oh, yes. Yes, hello. Thank you. Um, I, I was on jw.org. That's where I got your number from, although you're calling me back on a different number. Um, yeah, it's I, a bit, a bit mobile number. Yeah. Oh, right. Um, yes, I was given a copy of Enjoy Life Forever, which I found very interesting. I've been going through it. Could I just ask, though, which congregation are you? Uh, we're in Rochdale. Roch which congregation in Rochdale? Uh, Central, Rochdale Central. Rochdale Central, yes, that's the one that I left the message at. Um, the book's yeah. very interesting. The presentation is extremely slick and very, very professional. But I've noticed that some of the teachings in the book are a little different to when I went to church. And I was a bit yeah. puzzled about that. Could somebody help? Yeah, um, could somebody call around to, to see you? Um, well, I'd prefer to speak on the phone if that's possible, or Zoom, uh, or WhatsApp. Um, we can have a chat now if you want. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, I mean, one thing would be chapter nine, draw close to God through prayer. Yeah. The introduction says, Jesus taught that we should pray only to our Heavenly Father. Jesus himself prayed to, Je to Jehovah. He said, you must pray then this way, our Father in the heavens. When we pray to Jehovah, we strengthen our friendship with him. It says that in the first line, lesson nine, paragraph one on page 37, Jesus taught that we should pray only to our Heavenly Father. And I was wondering, is that right? Um, well, who else should we pray to if I ask that question? Well, Stephen prayed to Jesus in Acts seven, fifty-nine, And when they stoned Stephen, as he was calling on yeah. God, the word God is in italics, it's not in the Greek text, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. So at the point of his martyrdom, could I, Jesus, finish, could I finish my sentence? Uh, at Sorry, the, yeah. yeah, at the point of his martyrdom, he's calling out to Jesus in prayer. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Yeah, OK. Would... So he, he, the fact that he, could, he, he saw a vision of Jesus, didn't he? My memory serves me correct. So in that re regard, he, he, he was... You know, speaking to Jesus. Um, uh, they they saw. Are, are you, is this phone to, call because you want to pick holes in that book, or? Well, I want to understand your book, and I want to obey Jehovah God. Um, yeah. He he certainly did see a vision of Jesus in in verse fifty six, and said, so "Look." Him, go on. Sorry. Go on. Yep. And said, "Look, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God." Right hand yeah. is a figurative representation of a position of power and authority. Verse 57, yeah. then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. Right. Verse 58, and they cast him out of the city and stoned him. So verse yeah. 59 is separate to verse 56, where he he sees a vision of, of Jesus in verse 56. But they they grab hold of him and they cast him out of the city in verse 58. And then he's martyred in verse 59. Now, my point is, in verse 59, Stephen says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Wouldn't that be a prayer to Jesus? Jesus is in heaven. Stephen's on the earth. He's addressing Jesus. Surely we call that prayer. Yeah, in, in that context, yeah. Yeah. But uh, as, as a general, in that particular situation, because he, he had this vision of Jesus, and but do you feel it was a, a separate verse to the other verse, 56? I don't know, but um, just in that context, he, he was addressing that, his words to, I'll say his words to uh, Jesus. Right. OK, it's but, just that it's just that your oh. it's just that your book says Jesus taught that we should pray only to our Heavenly Father. Yeah. Lesson nine, paragraph one on page 37. But you've agreed with me. There's an instance here of somebody praying to Jesus, somebody praying to somebody other than the Father. Yeah, so why did Jesus, like you're saying, in, um, in the Lord's Prayer, you must pray them this way. He didn't say pray to me, he said pray to our Father, didn't he? Yes. I mean, he, yes, you I, know, you... you <laughs> yes, I, I, I would have no problem with praying to the Father. Father. You can't just pick out a verse, you know. 
Um, I would have no problem with praying to the Father. I'm just pointing out here, here is one of several examples where people are praying directly to, to Jesus. That's the only point I'm, I'm making. Most prayer is normally addressed to the Father. Yeah, I, I would certainly agree with you in that. But there yeah. are certain instances where we can pray directly to, to Jesus. Um, yeah. Um, not, uh, does it not speak of Jesus being a mediator? Not in... Between God and men. Not in this particular verse. It does in 1 no, Timothy 2.5. There is a verse that says he is a mediator. So 1 Timothy we, we direct 2, our prayers through, through Jesus to the Father. Or, you know, in that particular instance, yeah, he, he spoke to, uh, in this vision to Jesus, yeah. yeah I mean, uh, you know, you can't deny this though in Scripture. Yes. Is, but, Jesus, um, is, is Jesus your, your mediator? Um, well, that... That brings in another aspect. Um, if, if you want to go into the nitty gritty, uh, do you know uh, whether you believe you know you know about Jehovah's Witnesses that we don't believe that everyone will be going to heaven. Only a, a select number will go to heaven, and, and the, the, the hope for the majority of Jehovah's Witnesses, which is my hope, is to live forever on this earth. So we, we understand this mediator is is between those who uh, have the heavenly hope. But we do, obviously, we, we speak to, when we make, say a prayer to, to Jehovah, it's always in Jesus' name. But it's, it's just this, it's just the word mediator, because Moses was a mediator of the old covenant between uh, Jehovah and the, and the Jews. And we see Jesus as a mediator between Jehovah and, and spiritual Israel. So in, in that sense, I wouldn't say he's my mediator. But so, I only approach Jehovah through, through Jesus. I don't go directly to him. Right, it's always so, in Jesus' name. So Jesus is not your mediator? In that, in that particular sense. I mean, it's just what the word mediator is. <laughs> well, a mediator is one who acts as a representative between God and, and man. Yeah, yeah but he, he was a mediator. Uh, Moses was the mediator between Jehovah and the nation of Israel. Can you... So, you, well, we just extend that to Jehovah and the spiritual, because we believe in this. Can you show me a verse knowledge. that says that, that Moses is the mediator between God and Israel? Um, I, I can't just think of hand. I mean, you know. <laughs> but, uh, right. He was a mediator. Where? I mean, maybe, where does it say Mo Mo Moses was the mediator? Hebrew, so I'd have to uh, just check on that one. Sorry, where does it say Moses is the mediator? Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying that. I don't. I can't just give you the whole. That, that's our understanding. I mean, if and, somebody, uh, we'd if, have to just check. If somebody said to you, Joseph Smith is a prophet of God, and they went on and on and on, talk about Joseph Smith being the prophet of God, you're at liberty to say, please show me that from Scripture. Where does the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, say that? And if they can't um, prove that from Genesis to Revelation, don't, you don't have to accept that. If they can't yeah, prove it well, from from Scripture. So what? what what religion are you then? Can I ask that question? Um, I don't go to any church or religious institution at all. I, I gave up about thirteen years ago. Yeah. So what, what's your motive in phoning up now, or, or me, or you wanting to get in, us in touch with you? Um, it, well, at I was the moment you just you just picked two holes in what we believe. So you admit that there are holes in what you believe. No, I'm saying you've picked holes in it. I don't think there's any holes in it. I've been a oh, witness now well, for well then, years. Well, then, so if, I... if you don't think there's any holes in it, could you answer Acts 7.58? How, how, well, how do you I've, explain... I've in, in the context of that particular situation, he could see Jesus in heaven, in vision. No, no, so no, 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 that, no. He saw well, Jesus. That's no, he should do all the time. No, he I saw. Question that. He saw so Jesus. I've a question for you. No, he saw Jesus in verse fifty-six, where he's standing. He's standing before the religious leaders. He's then taken out of the city in verse fifty-eight, which would take some time, and he's martyred in verse fifty-nine. He doesn't see Jesus in verse fifty-nine. He sees Jesus in verse 56 while he's inside the city before the religious leaders. And your book says, um, Jesus taught that we should pray only to our Heavenly Father, but you've admitted that here's an instance of somebody praying to Jesus. And you, you said Stephen did pray speaking, to Jesus. Speaking to Jesus, yeah. Yeah, fair yeah. enough, it's there in Scripture. Okay. But 
I, I would never direct my prayers to Jesus. Because he's not your mediator. Because it's the word mediator. Have you not understood what I've said? He's, he's a mediator for those of the anointed. So he's not those the mediator the for the great class. crowd. I am not of the heavenly class. So the word mediator, I would not view him as my mediator. But I only then, pray to Jehovah through Jesus. So in that sense, he is a mediator. <laughs> he's an in-between. It's just the word mediator. What does it mean? He's, he's an in-between. I would never pray directly to Jehovah. It's always through Jesus. But if you're praying so through yes, Jesus, then Jesus is your mediator. mediator. If you're praying to Jehovah through Jesus, then Jesus is your mediator. In one sense, yeah. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Right, right. Um, another instance that puzzled me was 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10, where Paul receives a thorn in the flesh. And Paul says in one, 2 Corinthians 12, 8, concerning this thing... I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. The context for Lord is the Lord Jesus, who's mentioned in verse 9, that the power of Christ may rest upon you. So Paul prayed three times to Jesus directly that this thorn in the flesh might be removed from him. Here's another instance of somebody praying to Jesus, surely. So do you, do you, do you pray to Jesus? Yes, yes, sure. Sometimes I pray to Jesus, sometimes I would pray to the Father. Do you, do you use the name Jehovah? Um, I, think the is, the I think Yahweh is more accurate, but in the Lord's Prayer, we're not taught to use the word Jehovah, which was invented by a Roman Catholic monk yeah. called... I mean, can I finish oh, my Yahweh. sentence? Called, can I finish my <laughs> sentence? Called Raimondo Martini. He took the vows from Adonai and put them into the tetragrammaton, uh, and with an anglicised well, rendering, it comes out as Jehovah. Yahweh yeah. would, would be more accurate, but if we go to the Lord's yeah. Prayer, I think it's Matthew 6, verse 9, Jesus told us to use the word Father in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Yes, we're taught to use the word Father in prayer. Yeah, hallowed be thy name. So that, does that mean we don't use his name? No, 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 no. Father is his name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Matthew 6, 9. I'm reading Father's from the New King. I'm re Father's I can't person. speak if you're going to interrupt. Yeah. I, I don't think we're going to get anywhere with this conversation. I, I appreciate the conversation. Um... I don't think I don't think it's getting anywhere. We're just kind of arguing over stuff, and uh, you, to, to me, you're just uh, picking holes in that book. I, I'm sure you'd like to read it and maybe find a few what you would call inconsistencies. But uh, why did why did Jesus use the word Father when he prayed to the Father in John seventeen one? Jesus spoke these words, lifted up his eyes to heaven, and said, "Father, the hour has ah. come." Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. He doesn't use the word yeah. Jehovah. He uses no. the word Father. How, how would uh, you explain every, that? And every time he um, quoted from the Hebrew scriptures, where, where Yahweh, Jehovah's name was used, he always used it there. Well, but prove it. From the Hebrew scriptures. Prove that. Huh? Prove that. Don't just make um, that statement. Prove it. Well, I, can, I, I mean, I, I'm sat in my car now. Because I've got rubbish reception in the house. I'm sat in my car. I haven't got the Bible in front of me. Well, I've not. Even, I mean, I can find scriptures that, that where he's quoting in, in when he was uh, being tempted by the devil. He used Jehovah's name. You must prove it. Jehovah prove it. Yahweh. Prove it. Prove it. Show it to me from well, scripture. Matthew, why Jesus don't you? Matthew. Why don't you do this some preparation Lord. and get back to me? Why don't you do some reading, some preparation, and get, get, get back to me? Maybe if we spoke on Zoom, you might have better reception if we spoke on Zoom. But next time, bring a Bible and do some preparation before you talk to me. Wouldn't, wouldn't that um, be better? It's a way for I you to learn something. We, I don't wonder whether it's worth it, to be honest. Well, you might learn something by accident. Um, I, I'm always willing to learn. Good. But um, I, I just don't see the point of our continuing our discussion.
You said that Jesus used the word Jehovah. Did I hear you say that? I think you're alluding to Matthew 4. It, 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 as you said, it was that monk in the 12th century who anglicised the word. It's, it's Y-H-W-H, isn't it? There's no vowels in the Hebrew. It's just the consonants. That's the tetragrammaton. Jehovah yeah, is an anglicised... That's, that's Yahweh. Jehovah is an anglicised rendition of that. Yeah, the, te it's it's the tetragrammaton, not Yahweh, as you would say. Yeah. The Why tetragrammaton is never used in the Greek text. There's no verse from Matthew to Revelation that uses Yahweh. Uh, there is a part of Yahweh that's used, I think two or three times in the book of Revelation, Hallelujah, and the yeah. Yah sound is the start of the tetragrammaton, but we don't find yod he vav he the tetragrammaton, the whole of the tetragrammaton, anywhere from Matthew to Revelation. But if I'm wrong, uh, show me, I'm happy to be corrected. Yeah, okay. I mean, if I'm wrong, I'm saying correct me. I'm, why don't you go away, do some research and get back to me, we can speak on Zoom. And, and you can show me these, these things. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to listen. But I don't yeah. like people making statements to me and telling me this, that and the other and then not proving their statements. If you make a statement, you have to prove it. Yeah. So Just, what's your first name? My name is Robert. Robert? Yeah. Do, do, do you live in Rochdale or are you in this area? Um, I don't really want people to visit me, so I'm... I want, I'm not just asking if you live in Rochdale. I'm not saying where do you live. Um, I don't want to say where I live. Sorry. Okay. All right. But I'm. Okay. I'm happy well, my, to... my name's George, by the way. Hello. Hello. Please. 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 Please to meet you. Um, there yeah. is another chapter, chapter twenty-four, which I've been looking at. Would you be willing to spend a bit of time looking at that? Uh, just, just briefly. Just, okay. just uh, tell me what you've found that you don't agree with. Um, well, lesson twenty-four. It's page ninety-nine. Paragraph 3 says, how do Satan and the demons try to mislead us?